Hello, everybody. Welcome to week eight of BOL Platinum. Last week, we saw AIE Anguish take their first win of the season against the formerly Nameless Legion. On stream this week, we will be treated to fifth place, Big Duck Entourage challenging fourth place, Agni Kai, who are ahead in the standings right now by a mere two points. We've seen the Big Ducks on stream quite a lot this season. This will be their third appearance. The Flock did have a pretty rough start going 0-6 in weeks 2-4, to four, unable to win a single game that they played in those weeks. However, starting in week 5 against First Class, and in all the weeks since, they have been able to claim victory, thanks in large part to the addition of Outrage, the new midlander who's been doing so much for the squad. Last week against the Conduit Kecklers, formerly UMAD, it was yet another strong performance from the aforementioned midlander. Outraged doing a great job of controlling game one alongside Jungler Extinction. Game two turned out to be a little bit more contentious. Outraged and the rest of the squad were able to get it done in two with a strong team fighting composition, despite Domination's best efforts. The vein. Now, the Big Ducks find themselves with a big opportunity. If they manage to take another win tonight and move their win streak up to four in a row, they would claim fourth place in the standings with only one week left to play until the postseason. For Agni Kai, this is their second stream appearance. We saw them all the way back in week three against Dynasty. That match not well. Only two match losses that they have suffered all season long. Their other loss coming just last week at the hands of the number one team, the Conduit Gremlins. In game one last week, Agni Kai were not able to get much going, but they were able to take a win in game two thanks to top laner Wak Warlock popping off on the Urgot going 9-0 and 1. This gave the Gremlins their third individual game loss of the season, but of course, Agni Kai not able to win out, ending up losing out 1-2 to two in the match overall. While they have looked form fairly formidable this season, Agni Kai have sometimes struggled against strong opponents, and their foe for this week is definitely coming in with momentum. So, will Agni Kai burn bright as we draw ever closer to the playoffs, or will the Big Ducks spread their wings and soar into a top four finish? Bringing you the call for the penultimate week of the regular season. My name is Crewman44, and I am joined in the Blue Otter Production channel channel by the scrappy Mr. Stoat. Stoat, how are we feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm looking forward to this match. Two teams so close in the standings, you know, and this is going to be big. This is big. Playoffs is right around the corner. As you said, it's just a mere two points from each other. Yeah, really, really tight right now between these two teams. It's, it's kind of surprising that we find ourselves in this position Stoach. you know obviously you joining us a little bit later on in the season but you know I, i'm sure you've you've done your research and and you know that the big ducks you know as i mentioned before as well were definitely struggling early on but they've really rallied towards the back half of the season here and are now so close to breaking into that top four spot tonight is the night to do it if it's going to happen yeah you know in that momentum is really important because they're riding off that inertia right and they have some real heavy hitters on their team. They've got Data 4962, and he has some pretty extent, pretty awesome, um, pretty awesome rankings in the top laner, right? So he's got first in KDA in the league. That's something to scoff at. And lowest deaths. This man knows how to get kills, knows how to play safe, he knows how to carry. And Titan, second highest vision score. So. It's not, it's not a team you can really sneak on. And as you said, Outrage has just been stomping. And he's already fourth highest rated in the league. And that's fourth highest rated, folks. So all around fourth best player in the league. Yeah, and that's only playing half the season, right? Definitely pretty yeah. impressive from Outrage. But I really do like that you mentioned the top laner, Stoke. Because I do feel like if we were going to identify one lane as the lane to watch tonight. I do have a feeling it's probably going to be the top lane. You know, I briefly mentioned in the intro as well, the fact that uh, Vendetta had that really big performance, uh, you know, or it was, uh, you know, Walk Warlock who had that really big performance in the one game that Agni Kai were able to win last week uh, with the with the Urgod game where he was nine and zero. Uh, you know, obviously they didn't win out in the match overall, but, you know, according to Trucks, you know, the content king over there, then, Walk Warlock is the number one top laner in the league, you know, according to those rankings. But also according to Trucks, Vendetta was the top laner of the week 
in week seven. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's going to be a really exciting matchup, I think, between these two players. Yeah, and you know, Crewman, you mentioned the Urgot. That's going to be such a hot pick. Both of these players, Vendetta and Walk, love that champion, and they both have excellent win rates on that champion. Time to see, Stout, what these teams are going to prioritize as we get into champion select for game number one. Will the top laners indeed be the focus? Are they going to be saving that R5 pick for Walk Warlock here, starting off on the red side? And Vendetta, of course, and the rest of the big ducks on the blue for game number one. Yeah, let's see what they're choosing here. I am pretty excited to see these bands. I imagine there's going to be a good amount of mid lane and top lane targeting here. Uh, there's pretty good yeah. amounts of overlap in both teams mid. Both of those lanes mentioned mid and top have pretty good overlap in champion selection. So it's going to make things a bit tough. Yeah, Maybe I feel like... Over. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Stoke. Oh, no. I was just going to say the immediate Caitlyn ban. She's been tearing up all the leagues. I mean, Caitlyn is... Uh, lethality Caitlyn's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, definitely it can be very, very strong, especially if you do get that early lead, right? But the big ADC pick that I'm looking out for is definitely the Jinx, and there she is, yeah. going to get banned away on the red side, exactly where she belongs, I think, right now in okay. League of Legends. I do like to see Big Duck banning out the Elise uh, jungle from Soul Reaver on Agni Kai. He has a 73% win rate on that champion in solo queue and uh, also been destroying in custom games with that Elise. So a good pick off. Don't let them have the carry champion they're comfortable with. All right, see what these last couple of bands are going to be. Is the Ari still open? That's definitely a big pick I'm looking out for. Diana gonna be the option for the big ducks. The Aatrox that you mentioned for us before, Stoat, still available as well. I don't know if that's going to be... I mean, maybe Vendetta is going to feel like that is B1 worthy if it's also a pick away from the opponent, right? That is going to be left open. Let's see what yeah. that priority pick is going to be here on the blue side. You do need to be careful, though, because if Big Docs chooses to take that Urgot, they can contest with a Volley Bear or a Malphite top. But it's actually the AD carry first pick locking in the zeri interesting yeah that is going to be the zeri for the big ducks now likely the bot lane in response here for agni kai would be my assumption but the ari yeah left open means that is actually going to get scooped up for socks that's a freebie right there that champion is so safe post level six and just has so much potential to fit in so in various comps i mean she slides right into so many comps because she can play back or she can play full yeah, maybe the Vine potentially coming through here as well would be a great pairing with the Ari and great for locking down the Zeri as well. But leaning towards the Volibear instead, a little bit of a flex pick, I suppose, could go into either the top or the jungle position. Yeah, I think that's really smart. Um, okay, Jace, another flex. He could go mid, he could go top, probably top lane, though. Yeah, so, you know. that's a bit risky to pick so early in the draft. I mean, he's a champion you can play around, especially because they have the Ari. Not really sit there for Jace to jump on. Oh, but it goes to the Lilia instead. Okay, I like mm. that a lot better actually. Much safer pick. And Lilia has so much priority in these fights. Her ultimate, her uh, can really, can really shut this Ari down. She can't just fly in when she wants to. Especially yeah. with Zeri, who can more or less handle fights on her own. She's got so much movement speed. And Lilia is most played as well for the uh, BDE jungler extinction. So definitely some comfort coming through. Maokai going to be locked in with the jungler already selected. This is all but guaranteed to be Maokai support in the bot lane alongside that Zeri. And Agni Kai still yet to pick either one of their bot laners. Either the AD carry or the support pick going to get dropped down to the 4-5 here. BDE will have the opportunity to ban some of those looks like support options away. Although I guess the Ash could also technically be flexed. Yeah, she could be support. I, I doubt it. I see uh, Finny has a lot of Ash played. So I imagine this is just going to be an Ashy to carry, a safe pick. I'm really curious to see who their support is going to be. Um, I know good support into Maokai. I mean, I could see the Braum coming. I could also see a strong disengage with uh, Renata Glass, which would be excellent against the Zeri, the Maokai, and the Lilia. They're all champions that are fairly short or mid-range in that um, 
ultimate ability would really, really decimate that team fight, especially with Lilia autoing and proccing her ability passive on a bunch of her teammates. It's not good. Mm. Well, it's definitely not been uh, looked at so far in this draft. There is the Urgot, so go. that is going to get denied. Yeah, so I wonder who can go top. Um... Likely going to hold that Volibear Flex until the end of the draft now, I imagine. Still not entirely sure where that pick is going to end up. You know, he may take Renekton top, of Vendetta that is. And that would not be a bad pick into Volibear. It's also yeah. a really good flank champion to synergize with Olilia. Just a generally a safe blind as well, right? The crocodile. So we've seen that a lot in the past. Melio going to be the option. That is a very strong pairing with the Ash, no doubt. Yes. Absolutely. And his such good disengage. So I'm really liking this pretty safe composition from uh, Agni Kai. And it's good because it's really putting the onus. Oh, Aatrox. Okay. Um, there he is. He made it pretty far through the draft. We can see there the Darius getting banned away instead. But Vendetta Aatrox, definitely a powerful option. The fact that they have that AP jungler means that they are going to go in the end for that Jace as well. I do see a little bit of Jace recently for Outrage. As uh, just four games recently in solo queue, but uh, won three of them. So could be a good yeah. look there. I'm feeling a little worried about the Aatrox. Uh, does not have the easiest flank engage okay oh. i like the silas much better than the jace that my worries are actually pretty pretty much mitigated now by a substantial degree because silas can just take the volley bear alt or the ash alt and maybe the orn alt if he decides to lock him in now yeah, looks like it will be the volley bear jungle over here for agni kai and uh skarner just Ooh, considering okay. our options here for the Warlock, what do we want into the Aatrox? Garen is going to be the R5 selection. Mm. So let's just uh, go there for now. Stoke, Garen into Aatrox. How do we feel? Frankly, I don't know too much about this matchup. Admittedly, my intuition says Garen can do a lot of work because Aatrox relies so much on landing his cues and he has to keep proccing them again and again. And if si Garen silences him, well, good luck with that. Um, as for the team fights, I just think Aatrox is so much more useful. He's got so much more disruption, and he just has so much... I mean, he has actual CC. Garen has one silence ability. That is his only CC ability. Uh, I imagine he has to be looking for a split push angle, maybe looking to just dominate the top lane and hope his team can split. Uh, I'm a little worried about that pick, though, because if he doesn't get that, I, I don't know about the team fight potential. Yeah, I think that's definitely a fair concern. But you know what they say, Stoat, is the greatest CC is death. So we'll see if <laughs> Rock Warlock is going to be able to deliver that to the enemy carries or not. There definitely are going to be some decent peel options available for the ducks. You know, they do obviously have the Maokai, but the nature is grasp, can kind of try to knock away that Garen potentially. Uh, you know, Lilia Ultimate as well can be really clutch in those situations, uh, can be really powerful. And, Situations where people are trying to dive on top of the Lilia really allows her to get those multi-man sleeps off a little yeah. bit easier. Uh, so definitely, I, I think maybe the side lane angle for Warlock, as you were kind of just mentioning, might be the look here. Uh, I think, you know, it, it depends, right, on how confident. It definitely feels like a confidence pick, the Garen for, for Warlock. It feels like he's expecting to dominate this matchup against Vendetta. Yeah, Crewman, I absolutely agree with that take. I think that is so essential because their team pops off from level 6 to about level 11 when Lilia can get her second item. Things are going to get so difficult because like you said, this team has a go button and that is the only button they have. Whereas the Big Duck Entourage, they can choose to counter engage, they can choose to go in, and they can choose to bide their time until Lilia gets a good setup. So I am, again, pretty worried that Agni doesn't get the pop-off they need. However, they do have the champions to make the pop-off happen. They have a lot of stun, oh. engage, and they can pop out from bushes. They can pop out from across the lane with the Ash Alt, the Garen, and this uh, Ari. They have a lot of lockdown, single target destruction. So if you're caught by anyone, you're more or less dead, regardless of who you're playing on the side of Big Ducks. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think Sox on this Ari is going to be potentially really massive, right? We've seen this guy on the Ari a bunch of times uh, and has had some really, really strong performances earlier on in the season. Has been a big part of many of the team's wins uh, on this pick. But the Outrage's, Outrage's response with the Silas, definitely an interesting one. I think as far as answers into the Ari are concerned, this isn't one that I necessarily think of as being mm -hmm. too common. Uh, but what do you think is really the thought process here for Outrage? Why did we go for the Silas in this situation? Well, I think Silas is really just looking to take Ashes and Volibear's ultimate. Mm. Uh, I think his job is to just survive the landing phase, play safe, don't get ganked. Silas doesn't need more a couple items to really get going. And when he does, even if he's behind, he has the ability to take the Volibear ultimate or the ability to take the Enchanted Crystal Arrow from Ash, and he can do some incredible plays just by merit of using those very strong ultimate abilities to engage. So I really think that's the angle. Use it as, I mean, essentially use the only engage options, because again, outside of Maokai's ultimate, there aren't very many strong engage tools on the side of Big Dog. It's really only the Maokai ultimate. I mean, Aatrox has the flank, or you have to get a good Lilia flank or a good angle on her ultimate if you land her one long range kill shot. So I think that Silas is a brilliant pick given the composition of Agni Kai using their all. Yeah, it definitely makes sense to me, Stout. Uh, we'll see, you know, if, if Outrage is going to be able to get that done. Definitely some, some reasonably strong ultimates for him to steal away. Uh, the bot lane, I do think the Ash Melio should have supremacy early on in the lane, right? They have that double ranged advantage over the Zeri Maokai uh, versus, you know, Zeri, obviously her main goal is just going to be scaling up uh, and getting towards those couple of items and those team fights later on. Obviously can be strong early as well, but uh, when this is the, the lane matchup that we're looking at, I don't expect TDK and Titan to really be super active early on. Uh, so that kind of leaves us just with the uh, junglers, Stout. Uh, Volibear and Lilia. Volibear, obviously, much stronger in the early game. How necessary do you think it's going to be uh, for Soul Reaver here to get something done early on the Volibear? Well, I think it's extreme. I mean, I think it's uh, crucial, actually. I think mm. he needs to really focus top lane. I know bot lane may seem like the most obvious thing. You have an Ash, Milio, and Zeri is not very strong early game. However, if you can get this Garen fed, if you can get Walk strong and able to split push, that opens up all the map and the objectives because, again, this team pops off level 6 through level 11. So if you can get that uh, window to secure some dragons, secure Rift Herald, open up the map, you can effectively try to shut out Big Duck before their champions come online because it's going to be really tough to fight them when they're online. All right, well, we'll see if the side of Agni Kai are going to be able to find this early advantage. You know, on paper, the stronger team, the team higher in the standings right now, but big, the Big Ducks have been on such a tear recently, have really been just skyrocketing up the standings and are now so close to taking that top four position away from Agni Kai. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it, guys. Before then, a short break where we get onto the rift for game number one. See you there.
All right, BOL fans, welcome Summoner's Rift for our first game of the night. A very important match we have on our hands, as previously outlined. Welcome BDE on the blue side, AK on the red. This game to determine who is going to claim that fourth place spot most likely at the end of the regular season here. Yeah, and this is an important match. BDE has been doing well on a They've really proved themselves last half of the split. Crewman, what are you thinking? You think that momentum's going to carry them? Well, got some dancing in the mid lane. You think that momentum's going to carry them? <laughs> wow, look at him go. Oh, yeah, he's got some moves, the bear. Um, it's it's an interesting question. I really, he's honestly, Stoat, I have no idea what's going to happen tonight. I really don't. You know, you were saying that uh, you're pretty heavily in favor of this Big Ducks composition, but I just keep looking at this Sox Ari, and I just keep thinking to myself, he could do it again. It's very true. Ari is that champion when he gets a lead. She is so oppressive, but in a big butt here, uh, their composition is so reliant on getting ahead early that it, it really does make me work team um i just I, it's gonna be so hard to fight into a zeri and an aatrox and a late game lilia most of all her aoe sleep is just it's gonna be so oppressive and again like we were talking about in uh, lobby their team comp that is ag's team comp ak rather they are reliant on just go, go, go. There is no back off button. So should they get caught out or get in a bad fight, they're just going to get smashed. Yeah, we got uh, something happening in the bot lane already. Spinny is going to have to flash away to stay alive. And Tortuga trying to fight back now with some arrows. Gets the slow down on Titan. But TDK trades back as Tortuga walks forward. Milios tries to step up to continue supporting. And TDK just cuts him down for blood. Tortuga desperately trying to get one back. One more arrow will be able to at least get the Maokai, but a double kill over to the Zeri this early on. Absolutely massive for the Ducks. Outrage in the mid lane. Getting good damage on the Sox as well, but here comes Soul Reaver. Level 3 on the Volley Bear. Already cleared four camps. Looking for the gank. Now could flash forward. Finds the stun. Outrage flashing away. Potion ticking. Not enough. Soul Reaver takes him down. 2-2 two to two on the scoreboard early on. And a quick note for production. If there's any way we could turn down the game audio a little bit, it is very loud. Yeah, I mean, it's great that Sox got that kill. Like we were talking about, that Ari is going to be so crucial in the mid game. However, Zeri is a win condition. It's the win condition. She just gets two kills in the lane that's supposed to be impossible for her to really lane in. So... That is really not going to bode well for this team that, again, needs to get rolling in the mid game. We really need to hope, or rather, AK needs to hope that this Ari can pop off. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was uh, obviously Volibear able to get that kill in the mid lane. So Soul Reaver uh, able to do a little bit with the, it's much better now, by the way, production. This is much, much, much better. Um, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that uh, that is going to translate into the Volibear being a little bit stronger now early on, uh, which should ideally, right, for the side of Agni Kai, translate to him finding some more of this early action. You know, is uh, even in CS right now with the Lilia, which is a great sign as well. Into the top lane we go. Vendetta still with the flash. It might actually just like to hold on to it. A decent damage on to walk Warlock. Does also go down pretty low, but the Ignite comes out, and that is going to be the kill over to the top laner. So Agni Kai now. Pulling ahead, three to two. And that's what I like to see. I mean, yes, get this Garen ahead, get Walk going. And as for Arya, she didn't get the kill, but she's up in CS by a substantial margin. And she's got that solo lane XP, having stayed in the lane for much longer than Silas, which is going to do a ton for this mid lane match that's already really hard for Silas as melee champion. Into yeah, definitely outrage. You know, both mid laners already using that teleport. Outrage able to trade back a little bit here. The Sox is also pretty low on mana, which is going to be another consideration. But does have this minion wave pushing in. Outrage though doesn't want to let it crash. Charm lands for Sox. Chain lands for Outrage. The f wait, Sox. The chain. Oh, that was so close. What was that? Like thirty health. 
Maybe oh, even less. Back. In comes Soul Reaver. Outrage able to dash away, chains back onto a minion, and the ball of bear not able to find anything this time around. Actually, in comes extinction now. They've got a 2v1 situation. Saw Reaver should be healthy enough. Not gonna be in too much danger here. And in fact, you get some good damage onto extinction. Yeah, he's 2v1ing there. That is scary bear. And he's uh, strong in the early game. Yeah, man, and Socks overextending there, playing into his minion wave rather than poke. Oh, Big mistake, almost costing him his life there. Really fortunate he didn't give that kill over to Silas, because that would equalize the lane that you were ahead in. Yeah, that's not what you want to do. So, yeah, yeah. good on Socks for surviving that by the skin of his teeth, though. Yeah, that's, that's why you drink your health potions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's actually an excellent point for Solo Q, guys. You don't drink your potions while you're getting killed. That 30 HP or so, that would not have been there, and you would have just flat out died. Mm-hmm. Exactly right, Stoke. But yeah, it's especially important given, you know, how much we're building up this mid lane matchup as being really critical for Agni Kai, right? And being able to maintain control over this game. Sox needs to be in a good position or things could end up falling apart for him pretty quickly. Sox with a little bit of an attempt to run towards the top lane. Now, but the jungler's in the bottom half, as both junglers actually, making this an honest 3v3. Bramble Smash onto Tortuga, but Titan in trouble. That's one more swipe from the bear. Takes down the tree. And that is going to be a man advantage for Agni Kaino on this bot side of the map. Will they try to transition it into a dragon? Not feeling confident enough to do so. Without Rage moving over. Yeah, showing some discipline. Not overextending for the dragon. Gonna go for Scuttle Crab, maybe? Okay. I thought he was gonna go on the Lilia, but besides against it, it's gonna be a battle for the crab here. Yeah. I can't imagine Lilia's gonna win this one out. In fact, she's getting sandwiched here. Yeah, that's the nice collapse from Finny, but Extinction, enough movement speed to get back down here to the Tri Brush, join up with the bot lane. Nobody taking that Scuttle Crab just yet. In comes Sox with the Spear Rush, and be looking for the play. Now finds the Trum on to the Lilia, who was already pretty low, and Sox able to get the last, or it's actually Soul Reaver picking up the last hit on that one with the Sky Splitter, but now that's going to be Maokai overextended as a result of the jungler too hungry for the Scuttle Crab, and now everything is going to go the way of Agni Kai. That is definitely a dragon off the back of that fight there. Sox finally getting a kill on the board here. Super important. And that was such an excellent flank. Shoved in mid lane and came around by the edge of the red buff for BDE. And I love to see it. There was literally no escape. There was no way that BD was getting out of that fight alive. So excellent stuff. Really playing this early game composition to the strength. Percent. Yeah. I'd like to see Volley Bear start contesting the top side. Garen's been doing well. Up about 10 CS. Yep, 10 CS. And I mean, it's been a pretty boring lane outside of that first kill. Grubs going over to uh, BDE, which is a nice, you know, get all three grubs. It's pretty nice, but you know, it's not Definitely. really enough compared to the Infernal Drake. That's a fairly strong early game track. Yeah, and I do think the general consensus is uh, if you're not actually able to get any turret plates with your grubs, then they don't, generally speaking, have a whole lot of value. So we'll see if uh, the side of the big ducks are going to be able to get some control in any of these lanes. But yeah, Soul Reaver did have that one gank earlier on towards the top side to get Walk Warlock, Walk Warlock that first kill. So, uh, you know, I definitely think that there has been some impact there already. Soul Reaver certainly could look to provide more of an impact. There's a pretty big wave crashing, I believe, towards that top side right now. Yes, and as Garen has grievous wounds already, that is super hard to lane into if you're playing Gatrox. So, oh, but Ari's getting this in action here. Chain Lance Spear Rush available for Sox. Shouldn't really be in too much trouble here, I don't think. Spear Rush back on towards the Melee Chain. Chancro Slayer not going to find the mark and Outrage with their own dash is actually going to go back what? in. Silas looking for this one in the 1v3 situation. Outrage maybe not realizing how many members of Agni Kai were flash away now to survive as well. But the Stormbringer over the wall. The Blast Cone is going to bring Outrage right back into the Bears waiting. Soul Reaver picks up number four. Now Extinction going to get stunned up. Socks. Could look for another charm here. Lilia Flash Wake gets to sleep only onto the jungler. Charm lands onto Titan. Good damn the Orb of Deception as well. Agni Kai will push back the intruders. They will claim the enemy mid laner and now secure themselves a 1.5k gold lead in this early game. Man, that Bramble Smash doing work. 
saving that Lilia from death there. Uh, that was extinction is almost going to become extinct. Still, <laughs> that was very, really strange decision making from Outrage. I don't understand. I mean, like you said, maybe he didn't know the members were there, but he saw Ash go in for an ultimate. You have to imagine that there was someone ready to collapse on you if Ash committed the ultimate. So. That was a, a bit of strange decision making. Maybe he just feels that I'm behind and I need to get going and he went for a Hail Mary play. Still, you weren't that behind. Yeah, definitely felt a little bit unnecessary. You know, at the very least, he knew that Melia was there, right? We were not sure if he knew Bolivar was there, but for sure he knew that the Melia was there. It was a 1v2 at best. It definitely did feel a little bit desperate from Outrage as Silas did manage to get a little bit of deep vision there as we can yeah. see, highlighted by our observer. And if I remember it correctly, I believe the Volibear was passing through the lane, so surely he must have seen Volibear as he used off into the team. And speaking of which, Sox looking for some action. Yeah, Sox on the roam once again. Arm must be on cooldown. There it is. Connects on to the Lilia. Gets another reset on the Spear Rush as well. Titan pretty low underneath this turn. In comes Soul Reaver as well. And TDK and Titan are going to be pushed back. Maokai flash away. Charm coming off. Cooldown for Sox. Lands it on the TDK. Gets both summoners out of the Zeri. And things started off so good for this BDE bot lane. But now the table's absolutely turned thanks to Sox. Yeah, Sox is really coming up this game. And also, shout out to Soul Reaver. He's been playing the map like king. I mean, he For owns sure. all, um, he owns this entire jungle. Oh man, Outrage sticking around for an extra turret plate. No mana on the Silas to speak of. Just gonna get charmed up. Does have enough mana for one dash, but nothing to chain to. Get taken down, Sox picks up number three. And this game is is already starting to get a little bit out of hand for the big ducks. There's a dragon coming up in under a minute. I think if the side of Agni and Kai are able to secure that dragon as well, they are going to be cruising towards a game one victory. Yeah, with no priority mid lane, it's Garen, I mean, he's not going to be pressured in by top. So I think this dragon is more or less secured. In fact, they're looking to take out Felia, or Felia's Aatrox right now. Yeah, another A champion under threat here in the top lane as the Might of Demacia is on cooldown right now, but I think there's enough members here for Agni Kai to seal the deal. Oh, that is going to be the double scroll seed. Vendetta flashing forward. Walk Warlock gets off the last hit, and now Extinction's going to get taken down as well. Wanted to help out the top laner, but ultimately was just too far behind the play, and it's going to be Agni Kai once again winning out two for nothing in the skirmish. Their advantage just building and building. Yeah, and you said it earlier, Crewman, if you don't have the priority to push, these grubs aren't going to do much for you. Well, Agni Kai certainly has the priority to push, and they're going to get all three of these grubs rotate towards the bot side and probably secure this dragon right after. And it's a mountain dragon, so that's a lot more burliness onto a team that's already ahead. So good luck killing them for the next 10 minutes or so. Really. You said it was a disaster, but this is a train wreck. This is really not looking good for BDE at all. Yeah, I'm definitely right. You know, they, they had so much momentum coming into this week, but, you know, I guess you, you could say that they've had some easier opponents to go up against, right? Maybe a little bit of a honeymoon, honeymoon phase as well with Outrage coming in. This is definitely not a good start to this game. They are able to at least get this dragon because Soul Reaver wanted to commit to secure all three of the Kevins up towards that top side. Wasn't able to reset towards the South River in time. So that is at least something going the way of the Ducks. Yeah, you know, that was my bad. I assumed they were just going to all walk over. Oh, here. It's okay. TDK and Titan still standing strong down here in the bot lane. Able to find a kill in the 2v2 on the top lane, though. Vendetta actually getting the best of Walk Warlock as well. So big Ducks in these side lanes finding some life. Yeah, picking that solo kill, and uh, honestly, don't think. <laughs> oh, hold on, my screen has technical issues. Stowe. Uh oh. Yeah. Soul Reaver is making an appearance in towards this top lane. Vendetta no sun. Summoner Lender though, as oh my screen actually is doing a little bit of something funky as well. But yeah, Vendetta could be able to make it back underneath this turret. Two level advantage on the Vala Bear, not going to get burst down. You know, Soul Reaver is going to go in for another stun, but the Aatrox just has too much healing. Volibear is not going to be able to finish the job by himself. 
It's a close call in the mid lane out there. Actually, for Sox, had to flash away. Big Ducks, they must have heard us talking some smack stuff because they are really, you know, they're, they're trying to fight back here. Oh, dear. Some continuing technical issues for Stoat there. Hopefully, we'll be able to get those resolved, guys. But, uh, yeah, we do have the side of the Big Ducks trying to maintain some control here towards this bot lane at the moment. Fighting for vision in the North Pry Brush. Control ward will get cleared out by Finny and Tortuga. Yeah, the gold lead, honestly, not that big at this point in the game. Absolutely still a chance for the Big Ducks to team fight their way out of this one. They do, I think, arguably have the stronger scaling composition. Shelly now the target for Agni Kai, hoping to continue accelerating the pace of this game. And they do have numbers in the area. Should be able to secure this one. All right, I'm hoping all things are clear now. I've been having some internet issues, so I apologize, everyone. All right, Stoke, welcome back. As looking for a play here in the enemy jungle, Sox. Ooh, the charm has to be flashed. Extinction barely able to get out of the way of that one, but Vendetta moving over. Picks up the blue buff with the Aatrox Q. So uh, things working out reasonably well there, actually, for the Ducks. Better than uh, I think they had any right to, honestly. Yeah, and um, I'm going to be honest. I have to catch up to speed here. He's been having some issues with viewing, so... I didn't miss it for what happened, but it looks like BDE is coming back here. Yeah, they are going to be able to take this bot tier one turret. Titan, though, in trouble. Now he's going to have to flash away. Infinity Flash follow. Looking for just a little bit of slows onto the Maokai. Will be able to find it. Tortuga picking up the last hit there. Number two for the Ash. So the first brick taken by the Big Ducks, but immediately traded for a kill. And now with this Rift Herald, it should be the trade for the other turret as well. So overall, I think Agni Kai winning out in the extended play. Will they be able to get the tier two crash? It's interesting to see. It looks like Soul Reaver is gonna stick around here. Extinction is in the area. Follow Bear boards the Herald once again. Will fly tier two turret. Good value. Yeah, that's some good damage Ow. onto the turret. Looks like I'm not gonna get back off. Don't think they're gonna stick around for that teleport, which got canceled. Oh, Sox in trouble. The charm lands with the chains as well. The chain lash, the abscond abduct. It's gonna be a trade as the turret shot comes through for Sox and Outrage goes down despite finding the solo kill. Oh, and another 1v1. Oh, top laners, Rock Warlock coming out ahead this time around as I think you may have missed Vendetta getting a solo kill actually in the other direction, but Rock Warlock back on top. Yeah, I mean, if you are playing as Agni Kai, that's good to see. It was a little a little sketchy there for a moment, having 1v1. The Vendetta could cancel out that split push potential from there, and that's a huge part of their team composition. Out, you know, out the toilet there, that's not good. Still, he's dominating a top lane now again, so good on, War good on Walk Warlock for keeping that, and he's going to be putting pressure on tier two top lane turret now, which is gonna be so crucial. This dragon's about to come up. Yeah, well, just gonna reset for now. It does get the wave pushed all the way in though. So like you say, you know, that is gonna require Outrage to move over and clear that wave away. Soul Reaver with some control over the South River did secure the Scuttle Crab as well. So Agni Kai poised to secure their first Hextech Dragon. We do have a Hextech Soul here for this game number one. Very, very powerful, potentially, if one of these teams does end up securing it. Yeah, that's a huge soul, and they have complete priority over the river right now. Outrage oh, going in. Yeah, stolen Spirit Rush for the Silas as well as blue team. BDE, actually, looking to gain some control for themselves. Maokai getting chunked low, though. Walk like no access to the just yet, but the Maokai is just a little bit out of position. Forced to go in. The rest of the team not in any way able to follow up. So just like that, a 5v4, and Agni Kai looks like they will get this objective in the end. Yeah, and that was looking a little scary for Soul Reaver in the beginning, but ends up being Maokai who's caught out. Okay, oh, tier no. turret falls, Outrage not able to find the abduct though. Emilio trying to get away, gonna get put to sleep. You're actually the building built and will by not committed there. Just one for now. The Silas is going to go down. Tortuga picking up the last hit. Vendetta diving into the back line. Able to take down the Melio at least. Oh, flashing forth for the Q3 is Aatrox going to be able to take down the Ash as well. Looks like it was the Ari that was the target. Not quite. Walk Warlock brings down the big sword and the Aatrox will be dealt with. 
a three for one team fight. Definitely some close calls though for Agni Kai. Is now Walk Warlock maybe a little bit overextended. Slowed up by these Ash Auto or the Zeri is chasing onto him, able to flash forward. TDK gets that last hit, and Ash going to go down as well. Sox teleporting back in with the Spear Rush back off cooldown as well. Picks up the double kill in the end. It's oh my goodness, I don't even know. I for three or something. I think Agni Kai won out though. Yeah, honestly, that was. Yeah, <laughs> it was really close. I'm not sure who came out on top of that last couple minutes there, but it was great to see Zeri pick up two kills. In fact, I think that actually may go in favor of BDE for that reason alone. I mean, that she is, ended is up true. getting a shutdown, I believe, too, did she not? It might have actually even been two shutdowns. I'm not completely sure, but it definitely was a lot of gold over to the Zeri, who does now have two completed items and halfway towards that... That third item as well, potentially an Infinity Edge going to come through. Yeah, TDK made a hero play there, uh, committing his flash to it, so he's got to be careful. TDK will not have that flash coming fight for the next five minutes or so. And uh, now it's back to a lull in the game. Oh, but watch out. All right, going to get ignited immediately on site for Wak Warlock. He's going to be able to get the silence as well. Conqueror Stockbridge doesn't have a turret here. Uh, trying to get back towards the jungler, dashes back over the wall, it's Garen's worst enemy, his walls. And Outrage able to take advantage of that, Garen not able to follow. That was really close to a very bad situation for, um, Outrage there. And Outrage, uh, you know, we were singing his praises earlier, hold on. No, nothing's gonna come of it. But... Oh, actually, that charm does have to be flashed as uh, Sox once again looking for the angle, just use, utilizing that spirit rush immediately as it's coming off cooldown. It feels like every time looking for these plays, tier one in mid will fall. Yeah, and I mean, Soul Reaver is a terror right now. He's chasing, chasing down TDK, forcing that, uh, <laughs> forcing everyone to run away and into the uh, loving embrace of Ari. That wow, Warlock. Doing work. The Garen has emerged as the king of the side lane here. As we can see, two levels up on the Silas. And Outrage only able to catch these waves under the turret. Can't really duel with the Garen right now as Titan has to be careful. Really need to watch our positioning here for the BDE support. It's been caught out a couple of times this game at critical moments. Yeah, and you know, this is a dangerous safe, position. Um, Agni Kai's comp is so good at taking you out single target destruction mm -hmm. if anyone gets caught in the baron dance is going to be coming up fairly soon so this is a really really bad position for bde to be in they can't handle side lanes effectively and they therefore can't have priority over warding this baron pit area or the river so this is precarious Truman. Yeah, it definitely is a little bit of a tricky spot for the side of the big ducks. It's tough to really know what to play for. You know, you're down a dragon now as well. That's going to be coming up in about a minute. You know, it does feel like they have to make some kind of commitment. You know, they, they do have, as we previously mentioned uh, in the draft, you know, we feel like they do have the better scaling composition if they can, you know, get towards these 5v5 team fights. But the question kind of is, is Agni Kai even going to give that to him? Like, they have this Garen who's been so successful in the sideline, they can just continue splitting the map and continue trying to look for these these positive trades. And crew, man, that's absolutely the question. I mean, Zeri is really, really close to getting to that level. She almost has her third item completed. So if that, I believe it's going to be an Infinity Edge coming out for Zeri. If she gets that Infinity Edge or her whatever third item she decides to go, TDK can pop off. However, Lilia needs to get that second item. She needs that item to really start being a damage threat in this game. And she's barely far away from getting that item. She's been suffering this whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, Soul Reavers had, um, Soul Reavers really had extinctions numbered this entire game. Yeah, definitely feels that way. The Volibear been very active and first to a lot of these plays. It's kind of the strength of the champion, right? As you can be very aggressive with how you play out the early game. And I think Soul Reaver has been able to do that to a great yeah. level here. Extinction but, uh, still finding their time. Just giving Extinction a bit of a bailout here. Uh, Outrage has made the game very difficult for him to play around. The bot lane was already losing. And uh, Silas getting killed over and over again in mid is really not doing any favors. Sox teleporting towards this dragon. Tortuga's in trouble, actually going to get taken down immediately in mid lane. There's Outrage 
finding the play to get the big ducks into a good position here. 5v4 blinds the chain onto Volibear. Slip Reaver forced to fight. Sox comes in from the flank. They managed to take down the Lilia right at the start. Volibear is going to get put to sleep, but he's managed to create some distance. And Sox with the Spirit Rush resets is rampaging through here. Takes down the Maokai as well. Now the teleport in from the Aatrox, but it's a little bit too late. Most of the team's already taken down. Vendetta at least able to flash forward. Gets the kill onto the Melio. But that's a silver lining at best. Sol Reaver goes legendary. And it should have been a good situation for the big ducks. They find the pick in the mid lane, but it's just not enough. Yeah, really bad position. He's going spirit rush, but the charm lands. Outrage. Oh, he turns it around. Has the damage. Takes down Socks on the Ari. And Outrage really starting to come back into this one, but now he's on the wrong side of the map. Tortuga. Respawn taking the Hexgate out from base. Can Outrage get the execute? I don't know if the Silas can buy enough time. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow connects. Tortuga finds the shot and takes down the enemy mid. That was pretty crazy. That was almost an excellent situation for If they hadn't gotten wiped there, they could have contested that Hextech Dragon, gotten the Bounty Gold, and gotten closer to Soul, which now Agni Kai's on Soul points with what is often considered the strongest Dragon Soul in the game. This oh. is a really rough situation especially because their team is all in they're so ahead and that hex pixel with ash volley that is a lot of slow and damage which oh yeah zeri cannot be caught with the slows she does not have swifties and she relies on being able to kite so right now she's got no one to really open up the team point for her to kite this is uh honestly Looking really close to defeat for BDE, but if they can get another pick like they had and uh, hopefully not get wiped thereafter, there is hope still in this game because their comp does scale. And Lilia halfway to that second item. So let's see if they can hold on long enough. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, if the Hextech Soul does end up going over, I think Ari and Ash with Hextech Soul, as you mentioned, is going to be pretty much impossible to play into. It is going to feel like pretty much, I think, a done deal from there. But it does also feel like every time we're ready to count the ducks out, they do find an angle in this game. Is Outrage looking for it once again here, but Sox now level 16 on the Ari, and the Malignant's damage so massive as well on the Spear Rush. Outrage is getting chunked down so severe. It's just going to burn down to that damage the andres as well for socks so much damage with this build outrage just too aggressive there thinking that he could take the fight when he absolutely could not yeah and the atrox doesn't even have a teleport advantage i wonder if they're going to pressure baron that let's see there's and Walk in the side lane once again vendetta forced to answer for now teleport still on cooldown for the atrox walk obviously not Taking that one into the game. Just going to be able to continue putting on this pressure with the Ignite. Level 16 for the Garen as well. Chancros Row connects onto the Jungler Extinction. Just 100 to 0 And that will guarantee the Baron going over. It feels like now this one surely is just a matter of time for Agni Kai. Yeah, that was huge. With the Baron, it's just going to open up so much more of the split push dominance for uh, Waf Warlock. And it's going to allow them to play this map to the point that they're going to get, they're going, I, I mean, Crewman, I, I really don't see much of an angle at this point. Like you said, the gold advantage, the ability to push down these turrets, probably get an inhibitor off push, and then get that hex tech soul. And that's really, I think, when the DLC, like you said, Ari and Ash with hex tech, I just don't see how you're going to play into that. I don't think you're going to get the point where this team composition for BDE really shines. And especially yeah. because they really haven't had agency to even get fire game. Definitely the case. Man, this this Baron buff should be able to transition nicely for Agni Kai into the dragon spawn. You'd have to imagine they're gonna go for their resets now, so I don't know if they'd actually got around to that after securing the Baron. So we're gonna get back to base now, visit the shop, get those items, and then they should be able to control the map for the rest of the game as they make their way back out here. Oh, Sox has to be careful, though. You're all alone behind. I don't think um, he's aware of how many people are by. Ari is pretty slippery. Sox does have the flash right now as well. He's going to find Extinction, who just has the flash away from the charm. <laughs> World Seed only connecting onto the Rump Block, waiting in the bush. The Lily only. He just gets absolutely obliterated there. 
by the Garen. And now Sox looking for the charm once more. Outrage able to dodge away from it. Dodges away from the Ash Ultimate as well. And Sox last charge on the Spirit Rush just used to disengage. But now 5v4 on the map once again for Agni Kai's. They look to push down two lanes with their Baron buff. Three towards the top lane, two in mid. And I mean, they say Ashing. don't walk into a bush with a Garen. That's why. Vendetta forced to fight here. The Ash slows, meant that the Aatrox could not get away. And then the Stormbringer pop, popped as well from Soul Reavers. Tortuga is able to get it done underneath the turret. Chain can't find it. Ash stepping forward actually gives Outrage the angle to come in there with the W. Finish off the enemy carry, but now Soul Reaver to be able to finish the job here. Silas, good amount of healing. Outrage the chain is not going to happen. Soul Reaver takes him down. Extinction has respawned just in time to see the base dismantled. The first inhibitor taken mid will be next. Lilia almost burst down to zero once again. All would have died there to the Leandri's burn probably if it, she wasn't so close to the fountain. Yeah, four down. You got to imagine this is game. Volibear, okay. I guess they're just going to back off, play it safe. Um, or go for a bot for some reason. That's a little bit of a confusing decision given that they're four down and super powered minions on the Nexus turrets. But, yep. okay. Yeah. Still, I'm two like inhibitors, three. nothing to scoff at. I guess play it slow and steady if you know you're so far ahead. Why not? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. And uh, as we mentioned before, this is an extremely important match, right, for these teams, uh, you know, in, in regards to the standings that are going to be finalized after next week. So, Agni Kai not wanting to take any chances whatsoever. They did have some low health and mana bars you know, towards that push. So they are going to do one more reset, secure themselves the Hextech Soul, and then put the finishing touches on the game as that was a Zeri getting taken down green. Walk Warlock finding the kill in the 1v2 there. That was kind of the, the last hope for the side of, of BDE was a, a Zeri moment happening, but that is not going to happen from the Death Chamber. And now we're just going to shepherd in these minion wave. Big Ducks going for one last stand here underneath their one remaining Nexus turret. I don't think they're going to be standing for very long. It's a three-man sleep immediately cleansed by the Melio ult. And Extinction's not is going to be the one, in fact, to go to sleep. Nexus will fall. Veneta able to get one. Melio once again. 32 and a half minutes. Not the fastest game, but overall pretty clean for Agni Kai as they get their first win of the night. And you got to imagine, I mean, Soul Reaver wasn't even there to end games that just goes to show you how far ahead agni and really by minute 15 i think that game was so far gone from bde i mean let's look at that damage yeah. from socks really the highlight of that team definitely you know you're you're saying uh you're just saying that this game felt like it was decided pretty er early on i do think that was in large part due to Sox and Soul Reaver, right? The Volibear was extremely active early on in the map, just like we were looking for, right? Just like you need to be on this champion. Soul Reaver was able to impact every single lane, and Sox as well, once uh, he had a lead in mid, was able to utilize the Ari uh, to great effect, as we've seen many times before, to make that impact in the side lanes as well. I think those guys together uh, really did a great job of snowballing this one towards a victory. Yeah, and they did a great job at shutting out Silas um, Outrage to the point that he really couldn't even take ultimates and use them against uh, Agni Kai's team. I mean, he was never in a position where he could go into the team and fight. He would just be blown up instantly. So that was a massive hole in the composition because he was really the piece that gave them the hard engage that they needed. Again, Lilia, not the most uh, effective way to start a fight unless, you know, you have someone to help you out there, which they ended up not having a fucking Maokai score, 0 9. He wasn't going to survive anything going in. And, uh, yeah. Holy Bear, I mean, Soul Reaver having a perfect game. So, excellent play on his part. Yeah. It's kind of hard to choose an MVP for this game between him and, uh, Sox. Definitely a tough choice. You know, I think we can take a brief moment to shout out TDK as kind of being the ace on the losing team. You know, it definitely felt like, you know, despite the fact that the Big Ducks were thrown off pretty early on, it felt like, you know, the team was getting pretty desperate, you know, from, from very early on in the game. But TDK uh, definitely had some good moments, you know, especially in the 2v2. And then that one team fight in mid lane a little bit later on as well. Zeri was able to make some stuff happen, but just not nearly enough. You know, as far as the POG goes here for the side of Agni Kai, 
Uh, it's it's definitely a tough call. Uh, mm -hmm. I, oh, I I would say you, socks though. You like the socks vote? I, I, I do. Think I, Just because um, his flanks in the early game were so they were so incredible and they really opened up the dragon stacking. I think that really edges him out just barely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I you know, the zero in the deaths column for Saul Reaver is yeah. really is really speaking to me, but uh, I think we we can go ahead and agree on the Sox vote. I'm I'm definitely good with it. Sox had an amazing game on the Aria pick that we know that he's really strong with, and uh, just you know the fact that we're able to see it again here, I think is is worth celebrating. So good looks for Sox and for all of Agni Kai. Really able to take a pretty clean win there in game number one. We go to a short break, guys. We'll get game number two set up for you. See if the big ducks can bounce back, or if Agni Kai are going to assert themselves as one of the top four teams in the league.
All right, everybody, welcome back to the Blue Otter Platinum League week number eight. We are here for game number two between Agni Kai and the Big Duck Entourage. The Big Ducks taking a tough loss there in game number one. They are now going to be trying their hand out at the red side. Yeah, and you know, I was a bit of a hater for Agni Kai's comp, but they made me eat my mm -hmm. words. You know, they absolutely destroyed yeah. that. And uh, I think that the Big game. Ducks have uh, correctly identified, you know, that main issue from that game number one with the Ari now on the ban list. Yeah, that Ari, I mean, socks. You know, we gave him the Pog last game for a reason. He was an absolute force to be reckoned with. So I do like to see that ban coming out. Still, let's see. Um, socks still has a Quirky, who he's very strong on. Right. And let's see if they commit to banning Diana out again. It's also another strong all in assassin pick for him. Yeah, Diana mid, been making a little bit of a comeback recently. Ash is going to be the other option for the Big Ducks here for their red side bands. Obviously, there was a good performance in that last game from the Agni Kai ADC on that pick as well. Or no, actually. Or yeah, yeah. That's going to be Sorry, I pulled up the wrong draft for a second there. <laughs> but it uh, looks like Volibear is not going to be banned away and is going to come through for Sol Reaver once again here on the B1. Yeah, I mean, listen, if it, is, if it don't... If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So Soul Reaver did a ton of work. Um, Zaya, okay. So Zaya it was a really strong and safe pick. So again, um, doing some major work for TDK. So let's hope he can make that dream come true. Zaya Rakan, okay. Letting both through the draft. Just going to go straight for it. Yeah, so obviously the Rakan could have been picked away if they wanted to, if they were going to drop that pick down to the R3 potentially. So just wanted to get that locked away right now. And, you know, it did feel like TDK was kind of the one consistent part of the map, one, the one consistent player for the Ducks in that last game. So I think trying to build a comp around him, not a terrible idea, but Zaya Rakan, not the most meta of picks right now. Varus Seraphine going to come through on the other side. Varus obviously been fairly meta for a while, and Seraphine's seen some changes recently. Yeah, she has, you know, a more support-oriented, and Sejuani, okay, so I'm liking what Big Ducks is doing here. Definitely playing around Zaya and giving her a lot of, you know, giving her so much room to play around. Rakan and Sejuani are just huge walls of... Uh, CC you're not just going to easily go through. I do like Varus because if it comes to the point where the draft is not favorable for on hit, he can always go lethality and play from a million miles away, two screens away, essentially. So I think I really like how Agni Kai is handling the draft so far. And Silas right. coming banned. Okay. Um, that's an interesting ban. Silas wasn't particularly strong last game, but... I mean, he had moments. He definitely had moments in the game. Outrage was able to find a couple of picks, uh, you know, at, at various points. It didn't really end up translating into anything, but, uh, you know, the, I think I think they are going to respect the mastery, the comfort for Outrage on that pick, as the Urgot's going to get banned away once again by the Big Ducks. Probably a good look there. Yeah, I know. Uh, Walk was absolutely stomping so i don't do not give this guy a champion he is even more comfortable on than garen yeah yeah garen though obviously still available aatrox also still up yeah you know i think zach top i feel would be really nice to see on big ducks composition just round out this cc and also give a lot more agency to the top laner allow him mm. to play safe as well okay aurelian soul mm -hmm. Another scaling team from Big Duck. Yeah, definitely the case. They are going to be looking to play for those team fights once again, right? They're going to need to have a better early game, though. And they don't have a lot to work with so far with this draft in terms of the early game. So yeah. it feels a little bit risky. You know, they are going to give that R5 pick over to Vendetta in the top lane. See what Agni Kai is going to round things out with here. Yeah, and uh, I'm not going to lie, the Aurelian Soul's a little scary. Oh boy, yep, and that's wow. an, that's a specialty for Sox. Uh, see him playing a lot of Fizz and solo queue and another carry top laner, so... Oh, mm. what are you going to do? What are you going to do with top laner? Could do anything. Just flex in the options here, the okay. Warlock. Seeing what we're going to fish out of the cauldron. Going to be the Aatrox. All right. All right, so Aatrox trading hands. 
for this second game. It's going to be the Warlock piloting it this time around. Is the Garen going to come out? Is, are we going to look for the mirror matchup? Oh, the Malphite was something um, that you, I think, actually mentioned for us uh, earlier, Stoat. Yeah, so uh, this may be the uh, trump card here for Big Ducks because Vendetta mm. has a, get this, 100% win ratio in ranked on the Malphite. This is definitely a comfort pick. Beyond the comfort pick, this is a the ultimate pocket pick you could have. This is if there's an Exodia for this team, it's this Malphite. So, also a great answer into Fizz, actually, and to Aatrox. It's a good way to just say nope, you're not gonna dive into my team, and you're not gonna get away with it. Um, I'm assuming he's gonna have to be building a tank Malphite. I, please don't build AP Malphite. Oh, I top. sure hope so. I sure <laughs> hope it's tank Malphite. Yeah, I'm gonna be pretty you can't sad count it if out. it's some some Magic <laughs> Mountain shenanigans about that. But um, yeah, it, it is gonna kind of round out a pretty straightforward team team fighting composition here for the Big Ducks. You know, I think that that is mostly what they had in the last game as well. But this this composition feels even more so very standard like absolutely just front to back play for your your carries and try to win out that way and while i do like how big docs takes away one of the uh, weak points potentially i mean this is not a uh, top laner you can just destroy top lane and you know but yeah he's a malphite he's pretty tanky and in, into an atrox he's gonna have a lot of sustain a lot of ways to play safe under turret and he's very dangerous to turret dive because unstoppable force is such a strong ultimate ability Still, mm -hmm. the mid lane, I think, is even more precarious than last game. Asol is so weak early game, and Fizz can really take a game and run away with it. And he's so strong in not really the pro meta or really in competitive team meta, but as far as the game at large, Fizz is really strong right now. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's important to remember, uh, as we kind of saw, I think, in that game number one, these are not the best players in the world. You know, they do make <laughs> mistakes from time to time, you know, as most of us do. So um, I, I think that the Fizz is absolutely going to have an opportunity to shine in this game, Stout, you know, for that reason, is, is a champion that can really thrive in, in the chaos, in the messiness when people are out of position, when he can look for these kind of creative angles to catch people off guard, the Fizz can be so, so dangerous. Yeah, and the roam potential. And unfortunately, you know, like we saw, you know, Titan has the second highest vision score. Titan is a Titan when it comes to controlling vision. So Agni Kai has this huge advantage. And Fizz is, again, like Ari, one of those champions where you just can't give him the vision priority. He will destroy your team. If he chums mm -hmm. the water and catches your carries, that's it. Aside from Zaya using her uh, Feather Storm, most other people, including Malphite, if this Fizz gets ahead, will just blow up. Yeah, definitely the case. You know, and Volibear once again is going to have definitively the advantage in this jungle matchup. 1v1 early on, right? You know, Sejuani has got nothing on the bear here. Bear beats boar every time. It's so, true. um... It, it kind of does come down to uh, the bot lane then. You know, this is this was kind of the, the consistent bright spot for the Big Ducks in the last game. They put a lot of draft resources into this bot lane this time around, going for the Zaya Rakan on the 1-2 here on the red side. But uh, the Vera Seraphine response feels like a reasonably strong one. You know, you were already, talk already talking earlier about kind of the flexible nature of the Varus, how you can go for multiple different builds depending on the situation, I guess. Kind of what are you expecting Varus to go for in this game? And, you know, how are you expecting that lane to play out overall? Well, I'm expecting him to go on hit because there's just so many tanks on the side of BDE. It'd be really hard to play lethality. And really, mm. Asol and Zaya or even Rakan, to a lesser extent, are the champions you could really deal big damage to. I mean, you don't really want to throw your piercing arrow at Rakan and not hit the carries, right? So right. I would say it's most likely he would go on hit still. It would be very dangerous for him to go on hit because Malphite and Sejuani, Unstoppable Force, that's a really difficult ultimate to play into. And there is a saving grace for mid lane too. I, I know I want to, shifting really quick here, but I want to draw attention back to the mm. ASOL because when he gets that uh, Rhylai's Crystal, Crystal Scepter, provided he can get to that point, that's going to be very hard for Fizz to navigate and for Volibear to navigate. Mm. These are, and Aatrox actually, those are all three champions that are so reliant on just base movement speed and running at you, 
literally running at you. So it's pretty, it, it really does hinge on the mid lane matchup more than anything. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, uh, it's definitely, it's, it's another interesting pick from Outrage. It's, it's definitely uh, something that we're going to be excited to see and see if he can, you know, get, get that a little bit more of a stronger carry performance this time around. I do definitely agree with your assessment of the Varus there as well. I think not only is the on hit going to be really important uh, in, in regards to, you know, being able to take down the front line here on the side of the big ducks, but I think that the Varus is going to be necessary with Agni Kai Comp also as a consistent damage threat, right? Because without that, you don't really have much in terms of consistent damage. I mean, Fizz and Volibear are all burst. Aatrox is a little bit too inconsistent. So um, I think that is going to make a lot of sense. So there, there definitely is a possibility here. You know, if the big ducks can win out in the bot lane and the mid lane, and if we can see Vendetta stay strong here on the Malphite towards the top side, if they can get towards those team fights in the mid game, you know, they absolutely could still turn this match around. And this is kind of a must win. For, I mean, it's not a must win. They're they're most likely going to get into playoffs anyway. They're in a pretty comfortable position as far as playoffs are concerned. But they, if they want to make a push for the top four spot, uh, this is kind of a must win because the Big Ducks opponent next week, Stoat, is actually going to be the number one team. The last Ooh. opponent of the round robin for the Entourage are the Conduit Gremlins. So it's not going to get any easier after this. No, absolutely not. And Agni Kai really didn't make it easy the first game. So hopefully Big Doc didn't take that loss to heart and they can turn it around. I mean, I, I will tell you this, crew man. I really do think their comp is looking a lot. Uh, I mean, I liked their comp last time, but I think as far as ex execution goes and as far as TDK having a uh, front line that's mm. going to let him be the carry the team needs, I feel a lot better about this composition. Yeah, absolutely. It does feel like the Ducks are trying to index in towards their strengths. We'll see if it's going to be enough to take down the powerhouse that is Agni Kai. Don't go anywhere, guys. Game two, right after this.
Alright, mon amis, welcome back to Summoner's Rift. War game number two of the night. The Big Ducks now on the red side, looking to bounce back after that tough game one loss, and Agni Kai on fire here on the blue side now. Not necessarily uh, indicative, as usually fire is red, of course, but uh, absolutely red hot here on the blue side for this second game. Mmm, nice. Yeah, could it have just been a dance diff for that first game? That's actually what I'm getting there. Minions have spawned. It, it's it's tough to compete with. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely fair. And also did dance for a little bit longer than the Sejuani. So we have to say still a little bit of an advantage there towards Agni Kai. Yeah, they get lost sometimes. It, it's a bit weird. Um, yeah, looks like nothing at the level one mark. Just gonna be getting right into it here, as uh, my game audio actually appears to be gone now. We'll get that sorted. No problem whatsoever. Any runes or summoner spells that you feel like are worth mentioning at the outset of this one, Scope? I guess, I guess the other common option on the ASOL would be the Comet, right? But maybe just feeling like he's not really going to be able to consistently pressure the Fizz in lane. You can kind of just, like, jump up on your little troll pole and dodge away from the Comet damage, theoretically. So, uh, going for the Golden Come instead. Oh. Extinction fast level three. That engage from Titan is gonna be flashed by the Seraphine. It's coming down onto Tortuga, holding onto the flash. Time will spend it to the end and does get the Varus out towards safety. That's a nice early look from the BDE jungler. Again, this this mid lane is going to be so crucial. If Aurelian Soul doesn't get started, their pump essentially just falls apart. You know, Zaya can't be the only one doing damage. Yeah, would would definitely make it very difficult. That's completely all right. Production, no worries. But uh, Volibear getting pretty aggressive here in the enemy jungle. Reaver going to be pushing Extinction off the Krugs. And actually, the collapse coming through from Sox as well. Flash follow for the Volibear. He's going to level up on the Sejuani right now as well. Extinction able to get back underneath the turret. Will be all right. No first blood to come through just yet. But already, we're seeing the threat of this mid-move right from Sox once again on the Fizz this time. At least Extinction yeah. able to get away. This mid jungle duo from Agni Kai has just been really running the map this game too, and as well as last game. Thankfully for BDE, Extinction was able to secure that red, so that would have been really, really tragic if he couldn't get that buff and couldn't get that camp. He's not fallen too far behind, all things considered, but that said, it's 31 to 12 CS, so emphasis on all things considered, because uh, yeah. this is going to be a rough game for Sejuani to catch up. Thankfully, she's got excellent base stats, so she'll still have the usefulness, provided right. she uh, doesn't get completely shut out here, which, you know. Sejuani, yeah. N notoriously a strong low-income champion, right? So even if you are not able to keep up with Polar and CS. You are still going to be able to stun people, right? As we can see right here, gets the knockup onto Finny. But the Grand Entrance not going to find the knockup. The Frostbite does come through to get the stun. Finny in trouble, no flash. Remember, 
for the Seraphine. Barely able to stay alive. The dip come once again. And now Soul Reef drives play for the counter game. Tortuga able to set up. Gets out the hail of arrows. And the first one's going to go over to Agni Kai once again. The Rakan dashing away. The Sky Splitter not going to strike the Rakan. As he is able to get out of the way of that one. But Socks on the move once again. This wave is not going to be crashing anytime soon. Are his Tortuga. Sasuke's gonna have to be here for a minute. Actually gets out the uh, teleport from Outrage. And that is gonna be the kill going over. Well, the Pierce connect from Tortuga. That is so greedy from Agni Kai, but it works out so beautifully for them. They're even on the dragon as well. Oh no, Crewman, this is shaping up to be even worse than last game for BBE. That's exactly what you don't want to see. Like we were saying, so you want your free base time. Oh! Well, so Reaver does get the objective. Ball Bear is likely to fall here, though, and that is going to be a kill back over. But Extinction falling in return. Already used the Arctic Assault to get in towards the pit. Didn't have Flash either. So the Sejuani and the Ball Bear are going to get traded off. The objective going the way of Agni. Yeah, I think Extinction is out of the game right now. Um, this is really the worst start you could have asked for. And uh, Fizz is already starting to get ahead. So, this is really a worst case scenario, honestly. The Varus, the Fizz, and the Holy Bear all ahead right now. Yeah. And you can't even contest top lane. I mean, the Malphite, yeah, you can set up your team for what damage, though. Mm, yeah, definitely. Looking pretty tough for the big ducks here in the early minutes. But remember, this is the point in the game where this composition is supposed to struggle, right? You're not going to be able to get consistently get mid priority. Syracon doesn't spike until later on. Malphite doesn't spike until later on. It's just a question of if they can stay close enough, if they can stay competitive in the game towards, you know, once they get these ultimate abilities online, once they're able to start grouping up for these fights, then maybe they can, they can, you know, give us something here. Give us some hope for a game three, but definitely Agni Kai on pace right now as Sox moving from mid lane once again, even Finny here on the Seraphine to try to catch up the Sejuani once again. Soul Reaver died. But the Arctic Assault's gonna get the Sejuani out to safety. Pretty big late wave crashing though on this top turn. It's 4v2 for the dive. The beat get the done. World Ender pops for Warlock. Who's gonna tank the aggro? Soul Reaver picks it up. Only takes one. Gonna be two, one in favor of Agni Kai, and it's gonna be some golden experience lost for Vendetta as well. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that was a bit of a greedy dive. Uh, it really could have ended up a lot worse. Thankfully for Agni Kai, it didn't end up that bad. And unfortunately for BDE, they really didn't get much of anything out of it in return. You know, like you said, this is the point of the game where it's weak for that team. However, we saw what this mid-jungle uh, duo from Agni Kai can do to close out games. So it also looks like they're feeling a lot more confident about their ability to do so. They're going for a lot more ambitious plays this game. Yeah. And they're keeping the tempo moving pretty fast. However, I do want to point out that Outrage is doing a lot better in mid lane so far this game. Yeah, I've been able to farm up pretty comfortably, but... I mean, Sox has been so active. Already four kill participation out of five for this Fizz. And, you know, really in Soul, obviously not really able to do too much. Had that one teleport towards the bot tier one where he was, like, trying to deter that buy from coming through, but wasn't really successful. And, yeah, yeah, Outrage has been farming up comfortably. It hasn't been giving over necessarily any advantage of himself, but hasn't really been able to help the team either. Spinny is going to get stunned up by the Sejuani, but so close to the turn. It's a lot of CC, and the Zaya is going to be able to... The feather pull on the enemy support, but here's Sox again. The Fizz arriving. The Chum, the Watch. Okay. Gonna get taken down as one kill goes over to Varus as well. And it looks like for a second BDE had something there, but then Sox arrived again on the Fizz and was the difference. Yeah, and Crewman, it's... Oh, but hold on. I think Outrage should be fine here. Has the Flash, if absolutely necessary. Gonna go for the ultimate first. Oh, the Flash of the Stormbreaker is not gonna be a whole... Oh, I guess just waited a little bit too long to try to create that space, and Soul Reaver just runs him down. The Ball Bear had Flash as well and didn't even need it. Wow, that is uh, essentially just a good summation of how this series has been going. 
It seems like everything BD tries to do, they're just beaten to the punch. Tajwani trying to gank bot two times, had two great ganks. They just barely missed out on kills. And this third gank, everything looked great. And then Sox comes in to just step all over their dreams. And now yeah. it should be just a wet noodle fight and no one should die here. Well, we are getting pretty low. World Ender was already popped by Work War Lock Warlock and Sub Ball Force being held by Vendetta, which means the Aatrox is not going to want to stick around. It's going to go ahead and take the opportunity to reset, but this wave could be frozen by the Malphite if that is something that Vendetta wants to go for. Although the Malphite is low HP, Vendetta kind of needing a reset himself and is, it looks like, just going to push this wave back in. I'll say this though, if the Malphite freezes, he has to be careful. Fizz can dive all in. Oh yeah, and we've got an all in in the mid lane. Outrage going to get taken down once again. The Fizz ultimate connecting there on the enemy mid laner. Sox with the flash. To get away from the CC going back in. Now has the... Again, a Titan's going to pop the quickness, but it's just not going to get anything done. And that is going to be more kills for Sox and the second dragon as well for the team. Sox already 6-1, and one, and Sox was just dancing on them that fight. He dodged out, said Juani, flashed, and came back in for the re-engage. You know, that was an excellent ultimate from the beginning. So, I mean, you know, this Malphite, yeah, he has unstoppable force, but he's built in against Aatrox, right? He has armor, and Fizz is so strong. I, uh, I'm honestly very scared for BB. I don't see, there's really no safe place on the map for this yeah, we do have the ultimate here for Outrage, but taking so much damage already. Look at that. The Fizz is so strong, but the turret shot comes through the shutdown. Goes over to the A Soul, a sign of life, perhaps a chance. Maybe, maybe. I mean, a little weird. Varus didn't stick around to get the last auto. Uh, oh, wow. It must feel bad if you're Sox. But, you know, one shutdown to A Soul, that's big, but is it big enough? Tevin's actually as well. Soldier's not able to move in just yet. Here comes the bot lane. They do fancy themselves the 4v4 here as Warlock collapsing from the top side and the big old bear gonna jump in with the ultimate. Gets a bunch of right to the fight and the Taya already tried to go field to stay alive. It's not gonna be successful and the gold lead already so massive for Agni Kai. They're just gonna run him over. 15-4 yeah, right now. Goal difference is about 7k. Uh, that's a pretty, I mean, to say it's substantial goal differences is an understatement. This is really looking rough, and I'm going to be honest with you, crew man. I, I don't really see BDE having a window into this game, having an opportunity to get back. This is yeah. so devastating. Aesold's really the only one who's got any semblance of being, you know, a champion right now. And no one else really has the items they need. I mean, yeah, Zaya has one item, but Zaya isn't going to do with anything with one item alone. You know? It's really all about this mid jungle top right now. And uh, all three positions so far ahead. Yeah, I know our producer, especially, is pretty devastated. I know he loves game threes, but unfortunately, <laughs> doesn't look like we're going to get it tonight. This is looking pretty doomed for the Ducks. They were, looked like maybe for a second there. They were going to get off the ground, but just immediately shot out of the sky by Agni Kai. And uh, as you were just talking about, yeah, the gold lead, just monstrous. Absolutely massive. So early on in the game, looks like a mountain soul that we've got for ourselves here for game number two. That is going to be really great for them as well. Spiz Ultimate is going to connect here. That's going to be Outrage and Trouble Damage comes through. The Aurelian Soul Ultimate, the turret shot, the, the Q underneath the turret. Sox is going to get the kill, but trip once again... Yeah, I mean, Sox just happy gaming right now. It was just <laughs> such disrespect. Definitely. Diving under the turret, he was gonna die and demoting just to put some salt on the <laughs> wound. <laughs> yeah, is the the dance diff earlier and now the emote game as well going in Agni Kai's favor? Brutal. Yeah, I think Agni Kai's got the disrespect game on lock and. Overall, just the series unlock, I mean, there's really just not much else to say. They're just absolutely in control. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a big question coming in tonight because the Ducks had been on, <coughs> excuse me, on such a tear. They've been winning so many of these matches. It had been, uh, I believe, four wins for them in a row leading up to this week. And Agni Kai just taking that loss last week just against the Gremlins, the number one team. So, uh, in comes Soul Reaver once again. Going to flash over that wall. Extinction. 
counter it. Trying to get some CC on one of these priority targets as Tortuga may be in trouble as Blade Caller comes through. Good damage on the Varus, but the Ball of Varus tearing everybody to shreds. Oh, well, the Aurelian Soul still untouched, actually. Outrage is breathing on the Baron. Is going to be able to get that kill. Gliding forward now. Finny is, is running out of room. The Seraphine not going to be able to get away. <laughs> then that a Flash Malphite Ultimate just to seal the deal. So some okay. more gold going the way of Outrage. You know, great showing from Outrage. Um, a little... Yeah. You know, he has a... Okay, he has a lost chapter. What is an interesting build? Okay, building a mana item. I really would have liked to see the Leander. I think he's really nice. Well, Vendetta in trouble towards this top side, but the Juggler can arrive just in time to stun up Walk Warlock. Now the Aatrox is the one in trouble. Doesn't have Flash, doesn't get over the wall with the E, and that is going to be another kill over to the Ducks. Extinction picks this one up, says Ronnie. Honestly, some much needed gold there. Yeah, absolutely. Very desperately needed gold. I mean, just finished that uh, Sunfire case. Hopefully, gonna get some magic resist now with these. Yep, there we go. Mercury Tread. Still, Fizz wasn't even in that last fight, so it may look great, but, you know, it wasn't really... Aatrox wasn't either. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. A three, 3v5, I think, in the end. Yeah, so, uh, it doesn't bode too well. However, a million soul that features more okay. Outrage can get found in the jungle here. Chum the Waters connects. The Aurelian Soul Ultimate in response to a little bit of damage, but now it's the flash forward sock with the playful trickster takes down the enemy mid laner once again. Extinction does manage to get the stun, but it's Sox who gets the kill. Or it's Finny actually who gets the kill there on the Sejuani. And with the enemy jungler down, this is going to be Mountain Soul Point secured for the side of Agni Kai. Another really powerful soul on the table for them. And, you know, these these kills are going over, you know, and this is the scaling draft here for the Ducks on the red side, but it's still looking pretty grim. Yes, and Crewman, I think there was a very crucial mistake in the build order for uh, Outrage. You know, he built a uh, mana item. I'm, I'm trying to remember that. The Archangels, I believe. Yes, yes, yeah. sir, the Archangels. But he skimped out on a lot of damage as a result. And if you had the Leandries, there is a world where you live that in interaction just now. And certainly would have been doing a lot more damage. So, yeah, the futures market really coming in clutch for this game. However, that build order, I really think he shot himself in the foot there. Especially because he has no magic penetration. He's not really doing the damage you'd expect a Rallying Soul to be doing with two items. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe if you weren't so far behind in this game, it would have been all right, right? Because this build does obviously theoretically scale very well with the, you know, the extra mana that you get and, and the scaling that can come in uh, with that item. But yeah, I, I definitely, overall, I agree, Stoat. I mean, the Aurelian Soul needed to be strong right now. They needed to fight right now to stop this dragon stacking. The fact that he wasn't strong enough, I think, is, is not going to bode well for the outlook on the rest of this game for the Ducks. Absolutely, and yeah, I don't know what... Okay, hold on. This is on the prowl? Okay. Is he going to do it, though? This man has done crazier things. This game. No, no, the Aurelian Soul is too far back. Sock's not going to go for that one. He's going to push in this next minion wave. Yeah, and uh, I really wish you could see what the secondary runes were for Aurelian Soul. Oh, he's Soul. just going to wait in the bush, actually. This is so cheeky. Oh, he's hunting. He's just waiting for Outrage to, to move up here. There's the ultimate connecting. Is that just the kill right there? No, the shit actually comes through the mana item. The turret comes through the shutdown and for Outrage's ace. So what was that about the build, Stone? Yeah, well, listen, it helps when the turret's shooting him, but... <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah that was the, the factor. Socks is... Oh, showing us the uh, runes right now, productions. Okay. Okay, I like that. And, uh, I mean... I think uh, maybe mana flow bands over the absolute focus, especially against Fizz. Still, still, he is putting in work right now. Um, outrage, over. you know. I I get the happy gaming. It's fun. You were really ahead, but he's giving so much gold to Aurelian Soul now. He's yeah. close to a third item. This is not oh. good. Walk Warlock potentially in trouble here on Stopable 4, still available for Vendetta. Finny is moving over to try and peel for the top laner. That is going to be the Malphite Ultimate, though, on to two. Teleport coming through, though, from Sox. Could be able to turn this play around. Extinction going to be the first to follow the Miz. is so incredibly fed. But in comes Outrage as well, who's also very strong now. They trick back on 
pretty, pretty low. It's going to be the Fizz up onto the bull once again. Gets the damage with the Ace, so it's still pretty safe. On the back end of this fight, the rest of the team is going to get taken down as the triple kill goes over to Thighs. And Tortuga in the mid lane finds the solo onto TDK. Nicely done there for the Agni Kai ADC. They're winning out across the... Yeah, and I want to see... Oh, oh okay, dear. come to waters. That's yeah, going to be the shield, I think, is available for the Asol once again. It's going to be Sox dodging out on the turret aggro. Like, that's going to be the delayed ace coming through okay. for Agni Kai. The gold lead exploding in their favor once again. And I like to see this because they really need to, you know, tighten up and actually close the game out. They don't want to keep giving gold over for no reason. And giving them away giving uh bde away back into this game which you know which we've spoken about they have a scaling composition still looks like they're taking it more seriously that was a very well coordinated fight very well coordinated dive onto the rebellion soul and now they can just start pressuring maybe start prepping for this baron and uh they got the dragon coming up in one minute and 30 approximately and they're at soul point so if they want to flip this baron objective they're gonna put bde in a really difficult position yeah, definitely. BD are going to be in a really tough spot here in a minute when that dragon spawns. It's going to be two objectives on opposite sides of the map that they absolutely can't give over. So, yeah, can't be in two places at once, unfortunately. And it's going to be interesting to see how they try to solve that dilemma. Yeah, you know, Malphite is on the side of BDE, but it looks like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Indeed. And, uh... Jeez, yeah, that's Outrage and trouble here as Q3 does connect from the Aatrox and the Aesol <laughs> drives away, but the Aatrox also has wings, so he's able to get up <laughs> there and just cut down that dragon where he hovering or gliding or whatever that, that the attempted maneuver was. Yeah, he's a, I guess, anti-gravity, you know? He's a cosmic god, so it would make sense for him to in control of gravity, but... Uh, you know, it wasn't enough. He couldn't get away, and that's really unfortunate. He's died three times in the last five or so minutes now, and uh, this is the only damage-dealing carry champion on the team right now. However, Zaya is catching up. Still, not quite there. She's still a ways off from the third item when she really pops off. So, this yeah. is... Dragon about to come up now. Okay. Priority again. You can't walk into the phase. It's really tough. Yeah, it's going to be uh, the big ducks. Not really position. And the bot lane going to start to move into the river now. But a deep oh, no. uh, situation has been set up here. Yeah, this is really dangerous. Titan's going to try to get back towards the rest of the team. And the Netta goes in. But the rest of the team wasn't really ready. The Zai has already been blown up by Sox on the back end of this fight. And Alphite's going to get taken down. Next 5v3 now. Agni Kai looking for the finishing touches on this one. They clean up the rest of the front line. Outrage, the last survivor. The Grillian Soul does have Flash. Gets over the wall into the Raptor Pit. The slow comes through from the Sky Splitter. Sox with the Flash to follow. Cleans up the Ace Soul for the Ace. Triple kill over to Sox once again. And this game is absolutely donezo. Yes, sir. Dunzo with a capital D, a period at the end. They're going to get both objectives. Oh, yeah. They're going to get the soul point, and they're going to get the Baron. And uh, almost three times as many kills for Agni Kai against BD. True. Yeah, they got like a... Is that, that's like a, is that the league version of a hat trick? I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know soccer. So but I will say absolutely. Oh, hockey. Okay, well, that shows you everything I know about sports. Yeah, this is going to be the Baron going over as well, as I also not know anything about sports. Happy to change the subject there, Stoat. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Baron is going to get claimed. And uh, now, let's see how they're going to close this one out. Because this is something to, that we were talking about a little bit over the course of this game. The fact that we did see a little bit of happy gaming come out from Acne Kai, but with playoffs right around the corner, you want to clean up the gameplay, right? You want to be looking strong heading into that postseason. So let's see how they can do closing this one out as uh, Walk Warlock trying to make something happen here in the jungle. Extinction and Vendetta on the retreat. We'll be able to get away before the rest of Agni Kai arrive. Yeah, I saw this. I was ultimate up yet, so not much going to I'm sorry, production. Just peeping the gold there in the mid lane. Absolutely massive for the Fizz. About 4,000 ahead at the moment. That is an item and a half or so. Yeah, that is uh, substantial. <laughs> Two items. That's 
Yeah. Really uh, not really not good. Just but... picked up double needlessly rot on that base. Oh boy, and the Rabadon just casual complete. 2500 in pocket. Oh, actually had the Rabadons. So yeah, it was, was pretty close to the uh, full, what, what is the total cost on that? Like 36, 3700? Uh, yeah. So that's how much gold the Fizz had. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna we're gonna look to end the game with a really cool hat. Sox picks up another kill onto the Sejuani, goes godlike. Yeah, uh, 15 and four, it's basically the story. Sox, I mean, listen, that guy is the pog of the season for sure. Yeah, remember our game one POG as well. As yet, the team fight in the mid lane is always going to go Agni Kai's way. Outrage, thinking about gliding over and then realized where the DS was taking him and it's like, wait a second. That's not right. <laughs> That's uh, it's leading me into, you know, the uh, the underworld is where the DPS is telling him to go there. So he's going to call that one off. Going to hang out underneath the Nexus turrets instead. But uh, I don't know if there's realistically many other routes for the Aurelian Soul to take. Running out of real estate here in this game as the ultimate will come out to try to defend the last next turn, but it's not going to work out. So the shutdown actually onto the Fizz. Not quite sure. It looks like uh, Sox found his way onto the enemy fountain there. Warlock is going to push everybody back as uh, Soul Reaver, the one member of Acting Kai who's actually the end that last Nexus turn. As uh, the Varus has actually been taken down as well, so this game is, is seriously at risk of continuing. Soul Reaver trying to get the job done. The Bullet Bear up on the Oh one will God. come through and the game will end 26 and a half minutes and uh yeah clean 2-0 there for agni kai nothing to see yeah that was really close to just extending the game for another three minutes or so but they close it out soul reaver saying guys i'm the only one taking it seriously please <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean the, even if they did all die there and the nexus lived then they were still going to win the game it just wouldn't you know they would have had to wait until they respawned, probably. But yeah, I, I think it's it's good that Soul Reaver was able to get that one done in a little bit more of a timely fashion. So good good looks there. But unfortunately, I think the uh, POG once again is going to have to go to Sox, as we were kind of oh, leading yeah. up to there. So Outrage and Vendetta's damage combined a little bit more than Sox. So it's, it's, he did he did pretty well this game, thirty one k single handedly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Varus, he did pretty well too this game. You know, don't let Tortuga fall by the wayside here. At he that solo kill in mid lane. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and credit where credit's due, Outrage really showed up this game where he faltered last game. However, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, it really yeah. It, enough. It, it felt like, you know, given the way that that first game went, I, you know, in hindsight as well, it doesn't really feel like a draft from the Ducks that was very likely to work out. Um, and you were kind of talking about this, you know, honestly, even just with the lead up to this game as well. They just didn't really give themselves, I think, the opportunity to fight in the early game. And and that's where it kind of all, all fell apart for them. Yeah, Saw you know. Saw we this bear. Just controlled the early paper, game so well. Like on paper, this game and last game, I really like the compositions. A really strong front to back team fight, scaling to infinity for late game. But Engage. Yeah, Agni Kai just really showing they can pop off early game and this mid jungle duo, so much control. So I guess for teams who are going to play Agni Kai in the future, really look for stomping that mid games or putting up a roadblock at the very least. Yeah, yeah, you got to find some way to slow these guys down. I mean, maybe if you take Sol Reaver off the Vala Bear, but I mean, there's plenty other, of other early game jungle champions that you can you can try and get that early priority with. So it's tough. Yeah, yeah you definitely got to find some way to shut these guys down in the early game or they will. Yeah, because Sol Reaver is a carry jungle player and he's got Kha'Zix in his pocket too. So he's a hard guy to ban out. He's got a, quite a few assassin picks or just strong all in picks. But, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. As for BDE, they have a lot that they can review this game, at least. So hopefully they don't take this loss too hard and they can regroup and look at what was going wrong in the early game. You know, for one thing, I think vision priority and rotating to objectives a lot sooner is a huge issue that this team had in both games. Yeah, definitely. You know, at least for the side of the big ducks, as I was kind of briefly mentioning earlier, they should still be in a pretty comfortable position as far as playoffs concerned. Uh, still pretty likely, even with the 0-2 tonight, 
that they will manage to get one of those playoff spots. You know, they did have a, a decent buffer of like maybe five or six points between themselves and the kind of clump that's fighting for that sixth place at the moment. Uh, but we'll have to see, you know, as the rest of these results come in. And as previously mentioned, the Big Ducks opponent next week is extremely formidable. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is, you know, potentially, potentially dicey, but hopefully they will be able to still hang on to that playoff spot. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll see a, uh, you know, we'll see a shutout in the opposite direction. We'll see a good, you know, uh, upset like we had last week. That would be pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, don't hold your breath. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, definitely big props to Agni Kai for picking up the clean 2-0 tonight. Looking pretty good on their front. And they have a pretty easy opponent next week. They are going to be going up against AIE Anguish. Uh, who are unfortunately, you know, did have a pretty rough season. Did pick up their first win last week, um, but, you know, should, should be a very favorite for Agni Kai in that matchup for sure. But do you have any final thoughts on our best of three that we had tonight, Stoat? Any thoughts on the league in general before we close things out? You know, I mean, general thoughts are socks with eyes. I think other teams prioritize this guy. He is insane. Uh, he is definitely a powerhouse of this team. You know, Soul Reaver's no joke. However, I think Socks with Eyes, excellent showing this game. It was really fun to watch and play with Fizz. It's nice to see a champion you don't see too often. Definitely, yeah. Some creative uh, picks from, from Socks tonight as well. I mean, the Ari we see quite a lot, but the, the Fizz definitely uh, is a little bit more unusual. So some extra credit there. You know, we were really focusing on the uh, start of the day today, but uh, Socks as well ranked very highly, you know, in terms of mid laners in league. So... Nice to see that he was able to perform, but uh, that is going to be it for us for week eight, guys. So thank you, everybody, very much for watching. From myself, from Stoat here, from Alls, from the entire team at Blue Otter, thank you guys very much. We will see you uh, next week for the last week of the regular season. Do not forget tomorrow as well. We have the quarterfinals. I believe that is the Diamond League and the Gold League, both going to be having their first playoff matches tomorrow night so you won't want to miss that one for now that's going to do it from us thank you again for watching and good night